Welcome back. You're still tuned into Trading R. Well, one of the stocks of the day has to be RT Industries. It's down 8%, reported a weak set of second quarter numbers. The revenues increased by 12%, but the profit after tax, margins and EBITDA saw a big fall. Company has also lowered FY25 EBITDA guidance following the weak quarter. Joining us now is Suyo Kuteja, who is the CEO and Executive Director of RT Industries. Suyo, good morning. Thank you so much for joining in. And you know, this... Uh, in this decline that you've seen in margins has come in after four quarters of sequential improvement. What were the issues this time around? Pricing pressure continued in your MMA portfolio. But how long before MMA starts to see a recovery? So, um, it was a challenging quarter, Sonal. I think, uh, as we had mentioned last time, uh, the, the volume recovery, the demand recovery, we continue to see in a majority of end markets, uh, you know, the polymers, the dyes and pigments continue to do pretty well and going steady. Uh, Akim continues to remain soft. And as you mentioned, MMA, which goes into energy application, uh, did see significant headwinds during the last quarter. Uh, and it was driven by a very steep drop uh, in the refining margin portfolio. So globally, the gasoline NAFTA differential as well as gasoline crude deltas uh, collapsed quite significantly. Uh, and that was the reason we saw uh, pressure on the demand for the MMA. Okay, so um, are we seeing some improvement right now? And is it impacting just volumes or is there an impact on realizations as well? So on the energy segment specifically, there is an impact on both uh, volume as well as uh, realization because the downstream end market uh, margins have sort of uh, compressed quite significantly. Uh, and as we speak, uh, we see partial recovery, uh, but it does remain uh, subdued compared to where it was uh, around a year back. So, so, what does it do to your EBITDA guidance? You had refrained from reiterating that in quarter two. Now you're scaling it down. And what happens to your long-term EBITDA guidance over years that you had provided us earlier? I think uh, we we have in the in the analyst meeting yesterday we have given new EBITDA guidance. Uh, I think this year we are expecting uh, to close it around thousand to thousand fifty odd crores, uh, which is the visibility we have as on date. Uh, our three-year uh, target uh, still remains to double the EBITDA from the current level. So we have given a three-year guidance of FY28, uh, where we expect to land around 1,800 to 2,200 crores of EBITDA, uh, along with uh, you know much better ROC numbers and uh, much better debt to EBITDA numbers. Okay. Uh, so you're investing a lot in different streams. So whether it's CRAMS, you're moving up the value chain now. That's the plan with Aarti Industry. Do you think that this is something that will be volume driven or, you know, it will be margin driven since you are planning to double your EBITDA in the next three years? Uh, what will be the growth driver? Will it be traditional portfolio or the new products that you're entering into? So I think next three years EBITDA is predominantly driven by initiatives which are already in the play. Uh, and I think we have also given this time enough uh, clarity in terms of where do we think this EBITDA will come from. We are expecting roughly 150 to 200 crore to come from several cost optimization levers, which are fully in our control. Uh, we are expecting roughly 350 to 550 odd crores to come from volume and margin ramp up of existing product portfolio, uh, where we have recently expanded capacities, but the volume ramp up is expected to happen over the course of next one to two and a half years. And then roughly, uh, you know, 350 to 400 odd crore kind of coming from the new capex which we are putting in, uh, which will be a little bit back ended towards the second half of this three year kind of a leg. Uh, so that's the rough split of where we expect the EBITDA growth to come from. Okay, so you know, so a lot of other players they've been talking about recovering the second half, but then they also said it could move to next year. Uh, what's your sense? Is this an industry-wide problem and recovery could come by only FY26 versus quarter two of FY25 that was expected earlier? I think uh, to some extent it is an industry-wide problem, though for individual players, depending on the value chain they are present in, uh, I think the time frame of recovery could look very different. But at an industry level, uh, it is a fact that uh, post-COVID era, uh, China built significant capacity across value chains, which is coming on stream right now. And unfortunately, that is getting combined with a lack of domestic demand in China, which means uh, they're forced to dump these volumes all over the world, which basically leads to margin pressures uh, for players uh, around the world. Uh, and that is the phenomena we are going through right now. Um, and as you said, recovery, 
the the timeline of recovery will vary depending on the value chain uh, in which you're presented mm. uh you had a lot of capex lined up now most of it is done so what is the debt now i think the last number we had was about 3000 crore rupees so if you could give us an update what will you end the year with and even next year Yeah, so I think uh, as we mentioned last time, we are expected to peak around three thousand five hundred kind of uh, level from a debt point of view, and then it will marginally go down. I think our capex guidance also for this year is uh, in the range of thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred crore, which is slightly lower compared to previous number of fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred crores. And next year, the capex number will go down even further. We are expecting around thousand crores of capex next year. Okay, that's thousand crore of capex next year. I also wanted to understand the export picture, especially on the back of Red Sea crisis, because a lot of companies spoke about how freight prices went higher. Does it still continue? Are these costs still higher? And does it impact your export demand in any way? Um, or also the container availability is that a problem? So, from a freight point of view, it was an issue during Q2. Uh, I think we continued to see uh, significantly higher freight rates, uh, especially sort of in the west direction. Um, but, however, we have seen uh, softening of that in the last few weeks, and we hope that trend will continue going forward. From a container availability point of view or servicing demand point of view, I think that challenge does not exist. Uh, I think uh, we're doing pretty okay on that front. But from a freight cost point of view, Q2 was still uh, at elevated levels, but we've seen softening in the last few weeks. Okay, that is some positive news for the industry and exporters otherwise as well. Seo, thank you so much for joining in today and giving us all those details. So that's the word coming in from RT Industries, a multi-quarter low margin number that we are seeing. They've uh, scaled down their guidance as well, and that's why that eight percent knock on the stock that we are seeing today. We'll slip into a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk about more stocks and news updates on the other side. Stay tuned.